just thank you right now for this time. We thank you right now for this opportunity. Father, we just thank you for allowing us to come into your house, Father, to worship you, to learn more of you, Father. I pray right now that something is said that will help, that will edify, that will encourage everyone in this room. Continue to keep us, Father. Hide me in the hollow of your hand as I speak to your people, and not my own, Father. Bless, heal, deliver, set free, Father, from whatever it is in this place that may have us bound when we don't feel a spirit of worship. Father, free us, deliver us, heal us, bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 Let's sure say amen again. Amen. Let's sure say amen again. Amen. Amen. First thing I do is just give honor to God who's the head of my life, the base of my belief, the center of my joy, the reason why I move, exist, and breathe. I give honor to God, Amen. the one who created the world, the one who hung the stars in the sky, the one who causes a, a brown cow to eat green grass and produce white milk. I just give honor to God today, the one who allows me to walk on my own free will without being plugged into anything, without being tied into anything. I thank God, the one who allows me to wake up without having to take 30 or 40 pills to keep moving. I just thank God today. I'm excited today. I've been trying to prepare for a message and the Lord said, no, just give them what I told you. I said, okay, I'm going to give them what you told me. Me and Minister Tim was in the office and we were talking about it and I went to a revival last night. And the theme of the revival was restoration. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? I needed restoration. Yeah. And I thank God I went to the revival last night. Amen. Yeah. How many know everybody in this room needs restoration? Yeah. You may not even think you need restoration. You may think you're fine in your walk. But I'm telling you right now from experience, you and I need to be restored in Christ. Amen. Yeah. I know some of us are super saved. I know some of us think we got it on lock, but you don't. You and I need to be restored on today. Yes. Pastor, how do you know that? Because you was mad at somebody last week. You might have been mad at somebody this morning. Amen. You was feeling all funky about coming to church. Amen, somebody. Think about it. When you come here, you come to get a blessing. You ain't doing nobody no favors. Amen. There's something for you in the building. You and I need a restoration. The pastor gave the definition of restoration last night. He was saying how it is the stripping away of the layers of stuff that you didn't put on for all these years. Many of us have put on facades for all these years. We put on lies. We put on attitudes. Amen, somebody. We put on a, I'm all that. No, you're not all that. Amen. We put on all these things for over the years and they need to be stripped and you and I need to be restored. We need to get back to a natural state of where we were in Christ Jesus. We've been doing church too long. But we've gotten accustomed to being a church member Amen. instead of a soldier of the cross. Amen, somebody. Amen. We've gotten accustomed to sitting in the pews instead of serving and helping somebody. Amen. Amen. We've gotten so accustomed to putting on nice clothes where we ain't worried about the inside. Amen. Because you can dress up all you want on the outside, but if the inside is ugly, it don't mean nothing. You and I need to be restored. Let me find a scripture. I ain't got to find one. I got one. Amen. Job. Somebody go to the book of Job. Old Testament. We don't go to the Old Testament often. But we need to. How many know the Old Testament got all the tools that you need? The New Testament tell you how to use the tools. Amen, somebody. Job, the second chapter. Let us rise in reverence to God's holy word. Job, second chapter, the 23rd through the 27th verse. And if you are texting during service, I need you to stop because I need everybody to pay attention. Amen. Because everybody in the building needs to be restored, even some of the children. Amen, somebody. Amen. Joel, the second chapter, the 23rd through the 27th verse. When you have it, say me. If you don't have it, say hold on. If you said hold on, I need you to start attending Bible study. Let the church say Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't going to like this message today, but that's all right. Because there's something on the inside that I got to get out. Amen. Sleepy ain't got nothing to do with me. Job, it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat. Somebody should shout right there. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Amen, somebody. 
and I will restore to you the year that the locust hath eaten, the people, the haters, the stuff that was taken from you, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. Somebody say, I'm going to be full. And be satisfied. Somebody say, I'm going to be full. And praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I'm in your house. I'm in your church. I'm on your job. I'm in your car. I'm in your family. Amen, somebody. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Somebody shout, I'm not ashamed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading here and an application of his word. Go ahead and take your seats. Let me calm down. It's all right. Get excited. That revival, I, I was in there for about 30, 30 hours, but I got some I needed last night. Amen. I was in there, I said, man, it's, it's getting late. But that's all right. I looked at the clock, the hands stopped moving. Amen. But it was a blessing to be in the building last night. You and I have to understand that we serve a God of restoration, if you're taking notes. We serve a God of restoration. In the book of Joel, Joel was warning the children of Israel. He was warning the tribe of Judah. He was warning the, uh, the nation of Judah. He was warning them that uh, uh, God's judgment of sins is certain. And that you and I need to turn back from the sin to the Savior. Because you and I will never be restored, will never be renewed, will never have anything prosperous if we don't get away from the sin and get back to the Savior. Amen. Me and Brother Tim were talking earlier. There's a problem in the church. There's a problem with church folk. We all forget that there's a sin problem. You think it's a bad attitude. It ain't your attitude. There's a sin issue that you are dealing with. Yeah. Some of y'all ain't used to be preaching like this. That's all right. But what I'm telling you is there's a problem with sin. The Bible tells you explicitly that sin will cause you to have issues. It'll cause you to have problems. You and I think it's all right. It's a little sin. No, it's not. Sin is sin and God is not pleased. You and I need to turn around and accept the restoration that can be provided through Jesus Christ. Is anybody with me today? The people had gotten complacent. We've gotten complacent. We come in and we think that it's all right doing half of the stuff. No, it's not. Amen. A lot of us who miss church, I understand you got a valid reason from time to time, but most of the time you don't. Amen. I ask, we ask, the church is open for an hour on Sunday. I'll leave that right there. For you to think about. You and I need to get into a place where we are hard charging for the Lord. Amen. Where we can't be swayed, where we can't be distracted by the layers of stuff that we put on. You and I shouldn't even be distracted by our own attitudes. Amen. Because we understand that we serve a God who's greater than a bad attitude. We serve a God who's greater than an ache that I have in my foot. We serve a God who's greater than back pains. Amen, somebody. We serve a God that's greater than somebody who comes in church just to aggravate you. Amen. You and I serve a God of restoration. The people were centered on self. What I look like when I come to church. Don't nobody care what you got on. Amen. God cares about what's on the inside. Amen. You ought to be concerned with your insides. Amen. Stop worrying about what you're going to wear, what you're going to put on, how you're going to dress yourself up all pretty, catch somebody at church or something. But stop worrying about that stuff. Amen. And worry about the heart. Amen. When you cleanse the heart, when you walk in restoration, you ain't got to worry about your stuff because God can handle your stuff. You will go in the closet and you just have clothes that start to get holes in it because you got so much. When you worry about his stuff. The baby is saying amen. He can't even talk. Amen. People, we have to understand that we serve a God of restoration. You say, well, pastor, what can he restore? I'm going to tell you what he can restore. And if I don't get your business, just raise your hand and I'll keep going. Amen. 
God can restore your peace. Many of you have not had peace in a very long time. But I'm telling you, you've been coming to church Sunday after Sunday and you still ain't got peace. I'm going to tell you why. Because you have not trusted God with your all. You have not trusted God with your everything. You have not trusted God with your whole being. That's why you still don't have peace. You say, I come to Bible study. I come to church, but I still don't have peace. It's because you need to let go of what you're holding on to. So some of you say, no, I got peace. But you ain't got no joy. Why ain't got no joy? You walk around, you depressed every day. Why are you depressed? You say you love the Lord. You have no reason to be wallowing in self-pity. You have no reason to be wallowing in a bad situation because you understand that God can handle your situation. God can handle your stuff. Amen, somebody. Some of you holding on to stuff that you can't fix. You've been holding for a long time and it's time for you to let it go, amen. If you want your joy back, you got to say, God, I want my joy. I don't want I don't want no stuff. I want the joy, amen. You got to say, God, I want my joy. Y'all ain't used to this. That's all right. So get used to it. You say the next thing, well, well, Pastor, I got a uh, uh, peace. I got joy. Well, you ain't got no love. You got false love. Let the church say amen. You love people when they do stuff for you. But if they don't answer your phone calls, you don't love them no more. There's a problem there. Amen, somebody. You say you love the Lord, but you don't even love God's people. Amen. But then you say you love them and you treat them bad. There's something wrong with you. Amen. You need to focus on the stuff of God so you can understand what love really is. You walk in church, tell people you love them. But talk about them when you leave. That ain't love. You need to get yourself together. I'm talking to everybody in the building. If you don't like it, leave now. Amen, somebody. You and I need to get ourselves together. We need to get on the right page. God will restore you when you're in his stuff and not our stuff. We're too busy walking in the flesh, being carnal Christians, when we ought to be Christ-like. Amen, somebody. You say, well, I got peace. I've got joy. I've got love. But you ain't got no hope. You look at your situation and you say, it's always going to be bad. No, it's not. You serve God. I'm going to say that again. You serve God. If God can cause a dead man named Lazarus to get up and pray, I know he can handle your job situation. I know he can handle your baby mama. I know he can handle your baby daddy. I know he can handle your bank account. I know he can heal your body. Somebody needs to understand that you have hope. It ain't lost. You ain't down. You ain't out. It's just a part of your story. You need to Uh, 
can. Amen. Stop trying to figure it out and give it to him. Amen. You say, I got a bill that I can't handle. Well, guess what? God can. Amen. And then guess what else? If something gets shut off, it might need to be. We more worried about our phone bills than groceries. Sometimes your phone needs to shut off. Matter of fact, it needs to shut off even when you pay the bill. Let the church say me. You need to shut that phone off sometime. You need to stop talking to some folk. You need to stop talking to some people. You need to stop talking to Facebook, talking to myself. Amen, somebody. You and I need to do things different. You say, well, my finances is fine. My family's fine. My health is fine. Where are your friends saying, let the church say amen. You can't be what God wants you to be. Dancing with the devil Monday through Saturday, amen, somebody. And then expect God to open up the windows of heaven and just bless you with everything that you need. You need to get yourself straight and figure that out. He ain't going to bless your mess, amen, somebody. You can shack up all you want. He ain't going to bless that. You can lie all you want. He ain't going to bless that. You can connive. You can cheat. You can do all these things that you want to do. And God is not going to bless that. You and I need to get ourselves straight. Second Chronicles. Anybody got a Bible? Find one. Second Chronicles. 7 and 14. I'm going to give you something else for your future. Second Chronicles. 7 and 14. It says, if my people, somebody say, I'm your people, God. I'm your people. If my people, somebody say, I'm your people, God. Y'all ain't excited. I can't catch this. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm excited. I don't know what's wrong with y'all today. If my people, somebody say, I'm his people. Which are called by my name. You're blessed. You're redeemed. David, somebody shall humble themselves. Stop thinking you all this and all of that. Amen, somebody. And pray you got to do something. He said, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Stop being evil. Stop being angry. Stop being hurtful. Stop being spiteful. Stop being mean. Amen, somebody. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and will heal their land. If you try to figure out what you got to do to be healed, you need to turn to the master. If you trying to figure out what you got to do to be delivered, you need to turn to the Lord. If you trying to figure out what you need to do to straighten your situation out, you need to turn it over to Jesus. Somebody going to catch it in a second. Somebody should be excited right now because your life is not going to be the same as you leave this place. Your life is not going to be the same as you apply this. Amen, somebody. You and I have to change our life to serve a God of restoration. Some people think they ain't even worthy to be restored. You're worried. Yes. I know people that walked up one side of you and down the other, but you're still worried. Yes. I know people that used you and abused you, but guess what? You are still worried. Yes. I know people look down on you because of your past, but guess what? You are still worried. Yes. If we can be honest about it, everybody in the building got a past. Yes. If we can be honest about it, Everybody in the building got a room in a house that they don't want nobody to go in. Amen. If we can be honest about it, everybody got a chapter of their life they don't want read out loud. Amen, somebody. If we can be honest about it, ain't none of us perfect. First Thessalonians 1 and 4 says, Knowing breath, beloved, your election of God. Pastor, what does that mean? That means that you and I are chosen. Amen. That means that you and I are chosen. That means that you and I are chosen. Do you know God had you on his mind from the foundation of the world? That's something to be excited about. Amen. Do you know that God knew you, Michelle, before you knew yourself? Do you know that God knew you, Raven, before you knew yourself? Do you know that God knew you, Imadina, 
before you knew yourself. Do you know that God knew you sleeping before you knew yourself? You and I ought to be excited because God thought so much of you to think about you before your mama did, to think about you before your daddy did. You say, well, how did he think about me? He thought about you 2,000 plus years ago. You say, well, how? Well, through his son Jesus, you know Jesus, don't you? Mary's baby, you know Jesus, don't you? The lily of the valley, you know Jesus, don't you? The wheel in the middle of the wheel, you know Jesus, don't you? Bread when you're hungry, you know Jesus, don't you? Water when you're thirsty, you said God thought about me. Yes, he did. He thought about you all the way to a cross, amen. He thought about you being beat, being lied on. He thought about you being falsely accused, amen, somebody. He thought about you all the way to a grave. Friday. He was thinking about your Saturday. He was thinking about you Saturday night. But somebody said, early Sunday morning, when he got up, I was changed. I was renewed. I was redeemed. I was restored. Somebody ought to be excited. Of restoration. He said, Be glad, thee, ye children of time, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For we have given you the former rain, He's been blessing you back then. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain mighty. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. God will bless your life. He will bless your situation. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what went on. It don't matter what you did last night. What I'm saying is right now, from this moment, from today, you can turn yourself over to the master. You can be restored. You can start peeling off the layers of that junk. You can start peeling off the facade of that faith and that phony. Amen, somebody. Stop doing the faith love and ask God for real love, and he'll give it to you. Amen. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I'll restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten your haters, have blocked you for too long. The people have lied on you for too long. The stuff has hindered you for too long. The canker worm and the caterpillar 